Welcome to Ferros Technology. Today we're talking about form properties that are critical when you want to deploy your application and keep your users within the confines of what is best for them and what works with the application. So let's get going. You'll notice that I have several forms here, and the one that I want to look at today is this form contacts. And, and you can tell it's kind of a simple form. It's, you know, it has the record control over here, has the min, max, and close button up here, has your regular context menu up in the upper corner, the form name is up here. It, you know, very basic. All that's really been done with this form is to put the fields on it and connect it to a control source uh, in the back end so that the data could be put into the form. So let's go over what controls you would use to clean this up. The first thing I like to do is to make sure that people use a close button that I have on the form. So let's go over to the design view on this form. And in design view, what I want to do then is to add a button. The first thing I want to do is add that button right up here, right up in the top in the in the header. And I want that form to be an application. Actually, let's make it a form operation because I want to use it to close the form. If I click next here, I can use put either text to say close form or I can put a picture on it that's just this this exit to the doorway icon here. I usually uh like to put some instruction on the button. So I'll leave it at closed form for this. And I click next. Uh, I can change the name of the button itself. So I can, if I need to refer to it later, uh, command 62 is just as good as any name at this point. So I'm going to click finish. Now, if I view it, I have a closed form button up there, which if I click it will just do I want to save the design? Yes, I do. So I can click on it and then click close form. It opens and closes just fine. Well, you notice what that does is it means I don't need this button up here, do I? So let's start looking at some of the properties that you may want to adjust in order to make this form look like it's a production piece of work. And so let's go. And the first thing I want to change is form context. Oh, heavens. Um, I don't want the name of the actual form that I would use to keep my objects named correct with the right prefix and so forth. I would rather adjust that. So I'm going to go over here to the Format tab here. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the caption to Context. Okay. Now, the default view is the next. I'm going to leave it at single form. In other words, I want the first record presented and I want that form to be all that's on the screen. Then I can say, do I want to allow form view or allow data sheet view or allow layout view? For one, I don't want my users really to get into layout view because up here, what it does is it gives them this option on the, on the ribbon unless I take it off of the ribbon, which I could also do. But I don't like layout view. I don't like to accidentally click it myself because I just, I just don't feel that's useful. That's a personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, no, let's not let them uh, use layout view, okay? Now, picture type means that I could put a picture in the background here. Instead of just a color, I could put a picture. Okay, that's aesthetics, and I'm not gonna really get into a whole bunch of aesthetics here, but I do want to go scroll down and find these other things that are interesting and unique. So if you go down here, you've got record selectors. Now record selectors is this bar that appears on the left hand side of records. It's particularly useful if you want to copy an entire record and paste it, let's say into a spreadsheet. If I leave the record selector there, they can click on that record selector, click on copy, and transport that one record out to another source if I have it open in form view. Otherwise, they would have to copy one field at a time. So I think record selectors are useful as long as you train your users to actually use it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, the record selectors on the screen. So I'll leave that at yes. 
Now, navigation buttons, what are those? The navigation buttons are down here in the corner. And if I put this back in form view, it's these buttons down here. Do I want them to appear on here or not? Well, if I don't want them to appear on here, then I need to provide some other way for them to advance the records or get to a new record. And I could do that with buttons. In fact, if I went to back to design view here and clicked on form design, and I, I clicked on um, adding a button, another button, let's say up here. Uh, let's see where I want to put that button. Okay, yeah, let's let's put it down here. If I want that button to be down here, so if I use record navigation, I can then tell, put a button that, that says go to first record, last record, next record, previous record. I could duplicate all those buttons down there instead of leaving it on the status bar. Now, is that going to optimize the use of your form or not? It clutters up, tends to clutter up your form with a bunch of unnecessary, bunch of buttons that may not be necessary. It also, you know, gives you a little bit extra work. I'm going to leave my record selectors on there and I'm going to go back to the form controls here and say down here, I am going to leave the navigation buttons down there. Um, dividing lines is if you have multiple records, like for example, instead of a single form, you could have continuous forms. So at the bottom of here, you'd end up with a scroll bar on the right. And as you scrolled down in the records, you'd have a dividing line here and another record would begin and the, the user could then just scroll up and down through the records if you wanted it that way. So if you leave it single forms, then dividing lines and don't need to exist in your database. So now, do I want scroll bars? Do I want a left and right scroll bar? Uh, do I want an up and down, a, a vertical scroll bar? Usually I don't. I don't want them to be there. I want to make sure that I put the form on one page. But what if they've got an older monitor that doesn't have quite the resolution? If you take away the scroll bars on either a vertical or horizontal, you need to make sure that you test it on various levels, like especially 800 by 600, if somebody has an older laptop that only does 800 by 600 on the laptop. I had many situations where at Boeing, I had people with older laptops and I had counted on the users having a 1200 or a 1080 dot uh, vertical length and they didn't, they only had 600 and I got rid of the scroll bars and they couldn't get to things in the form that were critical toward the bottom of the form, like entering data. So that created a problem. So without that, you've got to make sure that you test it. So you have to make sure that your form fits the page in, in all the equipment that you're going to deploy that form to. Generally, I will take away the scroll bars. In other words, I will say neither scroll bar. Although you have the choice of leaving the horizontal or vertical scroll bars also, either one or none at all. So if I put that to neither. Now, what's a control box? The control box is this box up here. Let's say I don't want the control box here. No use for it, let's say. So I'm going to say no there. What, I've, a close button. I already put a close button on here. Remember this up here? So let's take away the close button and say no. Well, min max button, do I want them minimizing the form? Maybe not. So let's say I don't want them to close, minimize or maximize the form. So let's just say none, okay? And that pretty much takes you through the tour of the critical one. So let's see the changes that we've made. No, no min max or X or close button up here. No control button over here. It is a form called context. Uh, it still has the record selector and I left the navigation buttons down here. There's also a search button down here. And so my form ends up cleaner at this point than what it did before. Okay, so if I wanted my form to look a little bit fancier, I could come here to any of the labels, for example, and I could come down to a thing called special formatting, special effect. 
And I don't like it just being flat. I mean, it just looks like the words there and that's it. So I can say, let's make it raised. Um, so that special effect has several things here. I could make it raised and it looks like this. And so it just gives it a little bit of definition. And I could do that with each of the, of the labels, for example. And then I could go to a, a field control here where a text box control here, and I could tell it to have a borderline. And so the border, uh, the border style is solid hairline. And let's, instead of making it a hairline, let's, let's make it a little bolder, make it two points. And so I've got a little bit of highlighting that's a little bit darker, a little bit more rich there. So you can actually see the field that you're working with. And there's a lot of different cosmetic things that you can play around with and that you can keep working with until you get it exactly the way you want it to uh, want it to look. Okay. So the last thing I want to cover is there are times when you get done with your form and you've put all of all the, the fields on the form and it looks good. And then you open it up and start tabbing through the fields and they're all in the wrong order. It goes all over the place. Well, that's easily, resolved by clicking this button up here when you're in the form design view here and clicking tab order and here's the order that they will be entered in so contact id would be first and at this point it looks like it's in order it goes contact id first name last name address city yeah and then state zip code username address and then you can paste a photo in, in this particular database so that you can see who it is. Now I've got some dummy, you know, public, publicly available photos in here. Um, but you could have actual photos if this is an employee context or employee database or context that you want to uh, keep track of your friends and relatives, for, for example. So uh, there also is an auto order thing that kind of messes everything up so that you can redo it. That's my experience with it. But, you know, if, if you've got everything just in a row really nice, auto order works really well. But realistically, if it's like this, it's going to start putting it going back and forth side to side and probably won't give you what you want. So that's the tour. Those are the critical things that I always look at and I always work with in order to get a form ready to publish to a user. A lot of times I'll leave it kind of in a generic form until finally I publish it to folks and then I'll pretty everything up just before uh, I send it out to a bunch of users. Uh, but this is the, the grand tour. These are the most important things that you need to consider when putting and publishing a form. So if you like what you see, please hit that like button. Help me get it out to folks. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again in the channel later. Thanks.